Ask a student pilot when to use carburetor heat, and they will tell you only when landing. Ask a licensed pilot, and they might tell you a little more of the story, and say during any power reduction. Ask your flight instructor, or God forbid, ask the internet, and you will get dozens of different answers with seemingly disjoint rationale. You might be flying with another pilot who will forcibly turn on your carb heat on final, or you might read a comment on a YouTube channel from an irate pilot shouting their beliefs about their own airplane regardless of what's being flown in the video. If it's the correct answer you seek, it turns out that you should have been asking an aircraft mechanic the whole time, because the answer really depends on what you're flying. Let's find out why. The basic concept behind carburetor heat is to switch from your carburetor's normal air intake to one that's heated when you suspect ice is building up in the narrow venturi of your carburetor. But why would this only happen when you reduce engine power? Well, simply because there's less ambient heat in the front of your aircraft radiating off your engine. In older Continental brand engines, icing was much more common, as the engine block did not directly attach to the carburetor and much less heat was transferred. This much makes sense, but where is all that air actually coming from? Although the most popular training aircraft, such as the Cessna 172 or the Piper PA-28 series, usually have the same Lycoming engines like the O320, the aircraft's specific installations are actually quite different, and can even differ within models and between years. In the typical Cessna installation, incoming air passes through a filter on the nose of the aircraft and is piped directly into one side of the carburetor air box. When you engage carb heat, a valve switches from this incoming air to heated air that's passed through the heat exchanger around the aircraft's exhaust pipes. In a Piper installation, the incoming air is usually sourced from behind the cylinder heads, preheating the air entering the carburetor, and thus mitigating the chances of carburetor ice. Now that we understand the differences, let's try to see what we should have been seeing all along. Cessna checklists indicate that carburetor heat should be on for the entire duration of your descent while Piper checklists indicate that carb heat should only be used as required. The tachometer on both airplanes have a green arc below which carburetor heat should be applied. The Cessna stops at 1900 RPM, while the Piper's goes all the way down to idle. The Piper pilot's operating handbook actually goes so far as to say that carb heat should never be used unless engine performance degrades. Now, if you're willing to outright ignore what the manual says, and some pilots are, they'll tell you to turn on carburetor heat just to play it safe. But you could actually be putting yourself in more danger this way. Did you notice that when carburetor heat is engaged, the air entering the engine does not pass through any filter? It comes from around the exhaust, an area often prone to rust, debris, and other contaminants, not to mention what's already up in the air. There's a reason that all engines have air filters. Airports are often positioned near industrial complexes or farms where air is constantly polluted, sometimes by thick clouds of dust right over the threshold. Exposing your engine to these contaminants will shorten the life of your engine while increasing the chance of a sudden catastrophic failure. This is why Cessna bush pilots often advocate for turning off carburetor heat just prior to crossing the threshold. Looking for more reasons to minimize your use of carb heat? In case of a go-around, you want maximum engine power when you need it most, and having carb heat engaged can reduce your engine's maximum power by over 10%. Running an engine at high throttle settings with carb heat engaged is also known to cause engine detonation. The only exception to these rules is in an extended glide, when your engine will have time to cool sufficiently for its better design intake to no longer be effective. Lastly, in any type of aircraft, carb heat should never be used when outside of well-known carburetor icing conditions, which can be ascertained from this simple chart. Remember, all aircraft are built differently. Understand the one you're flying, read the manual, and make informed pilot decisions. I hope we've dispelled some of the oldest myths for you in aviation today. 
Until next time on the Friendly Skies channel, Squawk VFR and have fun.